Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a praise. Let's praise Jesus together. Can somebody praise Jesus? The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. How about we give him a little bit of praise? How about we give him some glory? How about we give him some honor? How about we recognize that he is the one who was and is to come? The Alpha and the Omega, the bright and morning star. Can we give Jesus some praise? He is holy forever. He was holy forever. As we began to sing that song, I started to think about what does it mean to be holy? That means he is lacking nothing. He is all sufficient. Not in the past, but in the past, today, and forever. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means he is never lacking. Whatever you're going through today, he is sufficient. He is all that you need. He is more than enough. That's the God that we praise. That's the king who we praise. And he wants to remind you today that he is all sufficient today. He's not just the God you read about in the Bible and he did a bunch of stuff a long time ago. He is sufficient right now. And he's going to be sufficient tomorrow and the next day and the next day forever. You know, as a church, we just need to pray. I believe we need to be reminded of that because it's easy to believe that he was sufficient for us 10 years ago. But that one day in my grandmama's living room when I gave my life to Jesus, he was good that day. Or that one time my pain got taken, well, he was good that day. He's good right now. He's sufficient today for your pain, your trauma. He is enough today. For your depression, he's enough right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you would show yourself strong. everybody doing this morning yeah okay sweet it's working when I first got here it was not working and I was a little concerned Uh, for those of you that don't know me my name is Austin and my wife and I we get to serve as the student pastors for uh, the students in 7th to 12th grade Uh, so yeah thank you Um, if you're here and you're in that age group, and you're not attending, why not? (laughs) I'm going to call you out. Just come hang out with us. We have fun, okay? But more than that, we do. We we focus on Christ. What's he like in your life, and how are you walking with him? Okay? We're we're in life together, so we live life together, so let's do life together, right? If you're 7th through 12th grade, come hang out with us. I do have one more announcement I want to share. Uh, before we get into the message, but the Aaron McNeil House Serve Day is coming up on October 12th, and so we have three people excited, but we need like 30 signed up. 22? Okay, I was going to ask that and forgot to, so 22 signed up, so at least eight more would be nice, right? Because other churches show up, but on this specific Saturday, we're saying the bulk of the people are going to be RH. And so we have 22. We'd like to have at least 30. Uh, if you can uh, attend and you have not signed up, would you sign up and let us know you're going to be there? It's going to be, again, Saturday, October 12th at the West Kentucky State Fairgrounds from 7.30 to 10. Uh, you're going to register on the RH app. Good job. Uh, so I get to continue in this series, Family Matters. And uh, when Pastor Richard sent out the email of the, the topics, and I saw my topic, I immediately got sick to my stomach <laughs> and thought, how in the world am I going to talk about this? 
for uh, like the first time, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm just for the first time, I was like, I don't even know where to start on this topic. Um, thought about calling Pastor Brad and Pastor Don. Would you switch with me? <laughs> <clears throat> but I felt like the Lord was not wanting me to do that. <laughs> Pastor Richard, about a week later after sending out the email, reached out via text, how are things going, how you feel about it, and I was still like unsure. He's like, dude, you got this. I'm like, okay. So just through prayer, some study, uh, I feel like the Lord's uh, given me what to say, so bear with me. But today's topic is this, in-laws. Okay, but hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it gets better, okay? You, you ready for this? In-laws, strong relationships and healthy boundaries. What? So, we're, we're going to try to do this today. Um, can I pray? I like, I like to pray before we get started. God, I thank you for your love and your mercy. I thank you for your grace and your goodness. I thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, because without it, I could not do this today. Uh, Lord, be with us. God, give us an ear to hear, a mind to understand, a heart to believe. God, that we would receive your word, no matter uh, how difficult it may be or how much we don't want to submit to it. Lord, that you would give us the, the grace, the ability, the strength to obey and do what you say. God, have your way in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, and minister to each one of us the only way you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. Again, <laughs> we're just going to go through a lot of scripture because we're not going off of my thoughts or my opinion. All right? So if you get mad, you can't get mad at me. You got to deal with it with the Lord. Our first scripture I want us to look at is in Matthew 19. Okay? We want to lay some ground, 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 lay some groundwork before we really dig in. So Matthew 19, 4 through 6 says this. Haven't you read the scriptures, Jesus replied. So these are Jesus' words. They record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves. And that word leaves, it, it means to leave behind, to forsake, to abandon. To leave his father and mother and is joined. And that word joined also means to be glued. You're stuck with me. <laughs> to his wife. And the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one, including in-laws, split apart what God has joined together. Listen, you're still mom, you're still dad. But your authority in their life, whether it's your daughter or your son, is different now. It's not the same as it's been, okay? It's different. So what does that mean? Well, let's go to Ephesians 5, and we're going to look at verses 21 through 26. And the title of this scripture, this, this teaching, is this, Spirit Relationships, Wives and Husbands. Notice it doesn't say anything about parents or in-laws, okay? So Ephesians 5, 21 through 26. And further, submit to one another. Okay? Husband submit to wife. Wife submit to husband. Out of reverence of Christ. Not because they're good. Not because they deserve it. For no other reason except for this. I am Lord and I said so. How many of you like being a parent and you're saying, because I said so. Because you have the authority. Right? God says, because I say so, do this. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For husbands is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body and the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. Not some things, not most things, but in everything. And that can be... Let me keep reading. For husbands. This means love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church. Well, how did he love the church? He gave up his life for her. 
to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. So I think this is a good moment for husbands and wives. Because scripture says, test yourself to see that you're in the faith. Wives, I ask you, how well are you doing at submitting to everything under your husband? Out of respect of the Lord, not, not even your husband, but Christ. And then I also want to ask men, how well are you loving your wives? Is it to the point of death to self? Or is your definition of love all about self? So we see a shift in the role of mom and dad here. They're not mentioned. It's husband and wife. They're glued together. They're one. Keep in mind. Husband, keep in mind. Uh, Wife, how you treat your spouse could in turn affect how your in-laws treat you. Okay, remember, you reap what you sow. Personally, I've not always been a good husband. Okay? For many years, I was very jealous. I was very controlling. uh, Very insecure. Full of fear. I did not lead well at all. I made our marriage miserable. We took a vacation. Uh, and my mother-in-law went with me, went with us. And she's, she's here this morning. Can you all honor my mother-in-law real quick? Her name's Teresa. We all went on vacation together, and and if I can just be frank with you, it was a vacation from hell, and it was not because of her, it was because of me, because of how I was, and and I want to actually say to to my mother-in-law, I'm I'm impressed in the fact that I feel like she held her tongue during that trip. Because there's, there's many times she could have spoken up, I'm sure. Because I'm not treating her daughter well. So, again, keep in mind, how you treat your spouse, it may overflow into how your in-laws treat you. You reap what you sow. So how do we work to have a strong relationship and healthy boundaries with our in-laws and extended family? Because not just, it's not just about the in-laws, but again, it's the in-laws with the son-in-law or the in-laws with the daughter-in-law. How do we have a strong relationship, a healthy relationship with healthy boundaries? I believe God teaches us in his word that we create strong relationships, which in turn will produce healthy boundaries. I don't know that you can have very healthy boundaries without first having a strong relationship. And it's done through two things. Well, I lost connection. Hold on. Bam. Everybody say it. Respect and honor. Romans 13, 7 says this. Give to everyone. Everybody say everyone. Everyone. That means everyone. Including in-laws, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, everyone. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If it's revenue, give revenue. If it's respect, then respect. If it's honor, then honor. How do we determine if someone deserves respect or honor? I think that's a fair question. Let's go back to God's word. Exodus 20, 12 says this. Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Okay. That's parents. But these are my in-laws. I would say, touche. <laughs> so, let's, let's dig a little deeper, okay? Leviticus 
1932 says this stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the age fear your God I am Lord again God's saying I'm telling you to do something not about how you feel or what you think is right I'm I'm saying you stand up and you show respect So let's go to another scripture. 1 Timothy 5, 1 through 2. It says, Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. Talk to your younger men as you would your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your... And treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. Respect. Treat honor. So technically, they're not your parents. But we're called to treat them as though they are our parents. To respect and to honor. And when we do, God honors us. God will, God will honor the relationship. Let's, let's go to an example in Scripture. Let's, let's look at Ruth and Naomi. So this is, Ruth was married to Naomi's son. He passes away, and Naomi's trying to say, like, go. Go live your life. Go. And Ruth's response is this. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, obviously she was, she said nothing no more. Ruth was honoring his, her mother-in-law. I don't know what it's supposed to look like for you. God will tell you that. Maybe you don't pull out Ruth 16, 1, 16 through 18 and read it to your mother-in-law. <clears throat> But there's still, there, there, there must be some type of respect and honor. What if your in-laws do not respect or honor you? Doesn't the Bible say, an eye for an eye? <clears throat> it does, but that's Old Testament. Let's go to Romans 12, 9 through 10 and, and verse 12. It says, love, love must be sincere. How, how is love sincere? It's, it's more than words. It's action. It's a life lived. It's demonstrated, experienced. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. That doesn't mean if your mother-in-law is evil, you hate her. Okay? Or your father-in-law or whoever. Because you hating them is actually the evil thing. Instead of doing that, cling to what is good. Okay, so what is good? I'm glad you asked. We're going to get into it. Be devoted to one another in love. And I like this. Look at this, man. This is hard. And this is why being a follower of Christ is more than just saying, I believe. It's a life lived. It's you doing it. Okay, it, it's, it, it's not enough to say, I believe, and we live our life how we want. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another how? When it's convenient, when they're good to you, when it feels right. Honor them above yourselves, period. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So this is my challenge to you and to myself. If you have a relationship, whether it's in-laws or somebody else, but they're supposed to be in your life, how do we deal with it? I think verse 12 helps us out a lot. First, we've got to have hope. And how can we have hope except to first have faith? Because okay, Scripture says we walk by faith, not by sight. 
So we don't walk by our emotions, what we're seeing, what we're experiencing, what we're feeling. Instead, we learn of who God is through His Word, who are a student of it, and we hold on to what His Word says. And we find hope in who He is and what only He can do. And when I have my eyes fixed on Him and not the individual or the problem, I can find joy even when it's hard. Patient in affliction. So if I have faith that can produce some kind of joy and hope in me, I have the grace and the strength to be patient. It gives me the ability to do what I can't do. He does. And I can be patient in that affliction and being mindful to always go to God in prayer about it. Not try to resolve it ourself, yourself. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So what is good and what does patience look like? Well, let's continue in Romans chapter 12. And let's look at verses 17 through 21. It says, Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone, everyone, that includes everyone, can see that you're honorable. There's that word again. Respect and honor. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you're honorable. Do all, that means do everything you can to live in peace with everyone. That means I can't be lazy. That means I can't just live according to my emotions and respond accordingly. It means I need to do all that I can to put death to self and say, all right, God, what do I need to do? Can I say something? Whether you're an in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, just because you see something doesn't always mean you need to say something. Okay? Maybe God's exposing it and revealing it to you so that you'll go to Him in prayer about it and speak over that individual or that relationship. See, God is really good at what He does. And he's the only one that can do it. And let me say something. If you feel like you need to force something to happen or to, to force a moment to happen so that you can say what you need to say, it might not be led by the Spirit. God's good at making things just happen organically and then giving you and me the wisdom to say what needs to be said in the moment. So that's the good part. Do everything you can to be honorable. Do all that you can to make peace. The patient part. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the, for the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Again, we've got to go back to faith and trust believing that, that God's in control and He can do so much greater than that I can do. More than likely, in my experience, in my marriage, 99% of the time, I make things worse. Instead, do this. Again, here's the good part. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Now listen, it's not about shaming somebody. See, in the Old Testament, when they would put ashes on their head, it was, it was out of um, a heart of repentance. It was declaring that, that I'm wicked, I'm sinful, and, and I need forgiveness. I need, I need you, Lord. And what's really cool about this is because Scripture says, have the mind of Christ, be like Jesus. And Scripture teaches us that it's the, um, 
the anger of God that leads us to repentance. It's the uh, belittling of God. It's it's the shame of God. No, it's it's what it's the the goodness of God. And so when we give back goodness, we're reflecting God. When we're serving even our enemies. I hope you don't see your in-laws as your enemy or your son-in-law or your daughter-in-law. But if you do, still, God says, love them. Serve them. Be good to them. Because your goodness could lead them to the place of repentance. The, the guilt, the conviction of the Holy Spirit could come upon them and they find the desire to repent. And then verse 21 says this, Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. By doing good. I do want to say this. There, there is a time for the older to teach the younger. And when I say older, please, I'm not being disrespectful, okay? But Job 12.12 12 says this, Wisdom belongs to the aged and understanding to the old. Proverbs 23.22 says this, Listen to your father who gave you life. How many of y'all used that before? <laughs> I brought you into this world. <laughs> Listen to your father who gave you life and don't despise your mother when she is old. Proverbs 19.20 Get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. And even in Titus 2, 4 through 6, it says the older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes and to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. And in the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. So again, there's instruction in the word of God for the older to teach the younger. To depart wisdom. But, but we have to do it in wisdom. Not carelessly. Not, not, not out of the moment. You know, Job also says, and I just want to throw this out there for the younger people. Job also said that there's another kind of wisdom that doesn't come from age, but it comes from God. So, I, I just want to encourage this too. Um, the older can also still learn from the younger. We, we ought to remain teachable all throughout our life. So let's, let's look at an example in Scripture where a father-in-law gave instruction to a son-in-law in Exodus 18. 17 through 24. So, so Moses, I don't want y'all reading ahead. So Moses, he's freed, God's used him to free the Israelites, to get them out of bondage. God used them to, re, to, to, to depart part the Red Sea, destroy the army of Pharaoh. All these Miraculous things happening, signs and wonders. Moses experiencing God. And then Moses finds himself from morning to late evening, every day, sitting before the people, with the people bringing all their complaints to him. And he's giving the spiritual advice they need. And so Jethro... Moses' father-in-law shows up. And I, and, I, and I like what he does here, and I want to point some things out after we read it. But he says this, 
Jethro says, this is not good, Moses. You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice. And may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to Him. Teach them God's decrees and give them His instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives. But select from all the people some capable men, honest men, who fear God and hate bribes. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,150 and 10. They should always be available to solve the people's common disputes, but have them bring the major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters themselves. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. If you follow this advice, listen, if you follow this advice, and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures and all these people will go home in peace. So what I love about the, this passage of Scripture is Jethro's coming. He's not coming um, belittling Moses. He's not coming and being condescending. Condens- you know what I'm trying to say. Thank you. He's simply offering advice. He's not demanding or threatening you. Listen, listen here, son. He says, I want to give you some advice. Hear me out. And if God commands you to do it, awesome. If not, hey, I I did my part. I shared what I thought might help. Some insight that I had. Even though you're doing these big, marvelous, mighty, awesome, crazy things, for whatever reason, you don't see how to resolve this here that's wearing you out, that's taking all day, every day. Let me give you some advice, something to think about and to consider. And if God wills, do it. I think there's wisdom in that. So maybe you're asking, when's the right time to bring something up to your in-laws or your extended family? And the answer I'm going to give is not a scapegoat. Okay? It's not an easy way out. And I dare say, if this is what you think after I say this, uh, perhaps your relationship with God is not that great right now. Because I believe this to be the truth. When's the right time? How do I know the right time is the right time? And it's this. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. Not your emotions, not your thoughts, not your wants. But what is God saying? Okay? This isn't the easy thing to do. The easy thing is just to bust out with what you're wanting to say. That's the easy thing. Again, the hard thing to be a a Christian is deny yourself. But we see how good God is. And he gives us the ability and the want to do that in our life. To deny self, to do things right, to be with him. Walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? What does God say in his word? What do I do? What is he saying to me now? Because scripture says, my sheep know my voice. So if you have a relationship with him, He's going to speak to your heart. He'll give you instruction and direction because he's good like that. Trust in the Lord, not your own understanding. Again, you might, in your mind, know the solution. Know what needs to be done. But don't lean on your own understanding. Maybe they're not ready to hear it. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe God's orchestrating a moment where you can reveal that. And share that. Live by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Okay? (laughs) This is what it means to be a Christian. A follower of Jesus. Not just that I believe, but I'm walking with Him. 
I, I walk by the Spirit, not by the flesh. James 1.19 says this. This is a really good one. Talking about needing to be strong. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. <laughs> it's an easy one to say, a harder one to live. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Do all that I can to make peace. Don't repay evil with evil. Overcome evil with good. His ways are better than ours. His ways are above ours. God, what, what I see here... Lord, do I need to say something or do I just need to go to you in prayer about it for now? What do I need to do with this, Lord? Revenge is His. It's not ours. So in closing, Mike, you can come on. How do we start this conversation about boundaries and what do I need to do to help grow a healthy relationship with my in-laws or my son-in-law or my daughter-in-law? Starts with this. Honor and respect them. Period. Why? Because God commands it. Talk with God about it. Go to Him in prayer. Be honest and real and raw with God. Seek His wisdom. What do I need to do? How do I handle this? How do I approach it if I need to? Create the moment, God. I don't know. If you feel led to, reach out and schedule a time to talk with your in-laws or extended family. Make sure you are honorable and respectful, regardless if they are not, because the Lord commands it. So when you're in the conversation and you want to be passionate, God, help me have self-control. Help me to be quick to listen and slow to anger and slow to speak. Be honest in your conversation and be willing to listen. I mentioned Teresa, my mother-in-law, earlier. And, and out of honor and respect to her, I did call her Friday night. He's like, hey, can I share this? You going to make me look bad? I said, no, I'm not going to make you look bad. <laughs> she said, "That's I trust you, Austin. I said, okay. You know, I go back to how I treated my wife, and I know it affected my relationship with my mother-in-law. Okay. Um, we did butt heads. And then uh, I just felt that, well, not I. We talked. Okay. We made time for each other. I went over to her house. I talked. She listened. She talked. I listened. We went back and forth for a while. And I believe that nurtured our relationship. We didn't see eye to eye in everything we talked about, but we listened to each other. And, and we've, we've gone from where we were to where I feel like we have a healthy, strong relationship now. And so... In honoring her, also, I, f I believe my parents are watching. I want to honor my parents. They were, they've been great parents, and, and they've been great in-laws as well. And so I just want to honor them and thank them. Thank you.
being a follower of, of Christ, it demands action. Far more than just belief. Okay? Because remember, Scripture says demons, not only do they fear, but they tremble at His name. They know who He is. There's no doubt in their mind of who He is. But they're not saved. They allowed pride in their life. Arrogance. And it cast them out. God casted them out. A third of the angels, Scripture says. So, so I, I ask you, in love... How well are you doing in your walk with the Lord? Now, I'm not asking if you believe. I'm asking how well, just, just in what we've looked at today, how well are you doing? If not well, listen. Praise God. Praise God that He's convicted your heart, that He's allowed you to see it. Now let's do something about it. See, conviction isn't about just feeling bad. Conviction is about recognizing, confessing it, and then doing something about it. So I want to I want to leave you with this last statement. Remember, you cannot make anyone do anything. You can't. Listen, God doesn't even do that. He doesn't make any of us do anything. He gives us opportunities to do the right thing, but he doesn't even make us do anything. You and I cannot make anybody else do anything either. But what you can do, do all that you can to make peace and leave the rest up to God. Do all that you can to make peace and leave the rest up to God. Go back to the scripture in Romans. Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So we're called to do good, to serve, to be like Jesus, even to our enemies. We're called to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And this applies to any relationship, just FYI not just the in-laws. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word. Uh, I thank you for your instruction. I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for your correction. I thank you for your conviction, God. I thank you for your encouragement. You're, you're such a, a loving God, a good God. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Lord, where, where you've revealed to each one of us, myself included, where we fall short, uh, Jesus, uh, guide us, instruct us, Lord, what we need to do and how we need to do it, what we need to make right in our life, what we need to let go, what we need to add, whatever the case may be. Holy Spirit, minister to us. God, make it clear. Make it clear of what we need to do. And then, Lord, give us the courage to do it. Give us the ability. God, create in us a new heart and a new mind. God, we invite you to come and do what only you can do in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ and everybody said.